Bill, I really want people to understand what the historical criteria are that textual scholars used in determining the historical reliability of a saying or something that's found in a document. Let's go through them. There's a multiplicity of them, John. Let me mention just six. Number one would be historical fit. That is to say, the incident fits in with known facts about the time and place. The Gospels are not anachronistic, but they are consistent with what we know of first century Jewish society and culture. Secondly, would be independent early sources. If an event or saying is found in an early source and then also independently in another source, then that increases the probability that it goes back to a historical event because it would be highly improbable that independent early sources would both make up the same event. The miracles of Jesus would be an example of events that are multiply and independently attested in early sources. A third criterion is the criterion of embarrassment. If an incident is awkward or counterproductive for the early Christian movement, then it's unlikely to have been made up by those Christians. An example would be the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist. John was baptizing people for the forgiveness of sins. Since early Christians believed that Jesus was sinless, they wouldn't make up a story about Jesus going to John to be baptized. And therefore, virtually all scholars recognize that this is a historical fact that John did baptize Jesus. A fourth criterion would be dissimilarity. If an incident is unlike earlier Jewish ideas and also unlike later Christian ideas, then it's likely to be historical rather than the product of early Jewish or Christian ideas. An example here would be Jesus' claim to be the Son of Man. This is not a title that was used in the early Christian church for Jesus. It's something that is relatively rare in antecedent Judaism, and yet it is Jesus' favorite self-designation in the Gospels, which makes it highly probable that Jesus did think of himself as and called himself the Son of Man. Yeah, he used it 82 times of himself in the four Gospels. That's a lot of times. Yes, that's right. A fifth criterion would be the presence of Semitisms, that is to say, traces of Hebrew or Aramaic in the Gospels. The Gospels are written in Greek, so when you get these traces of Aramaic or, or Hebrew, you're getting back to the actual words that were spoken by Jesus and his compatriots. And finally, a sixth criterion would be coherence. If the incident fits in with already established facts about Jesus, then that will increase the historical probability of that incident as well. Yeah, and these criteria can be applied to specific incidents in the books. They're picking out nuggets that you're looking at. Explain that. That's right. These criteria can be applied to specific sayings or events in the life of Jesus, regardless of where they're found. You could apply these to the apocryphal Gospels or even the Quran to try to find historical nuggets in these otherwise unreliable sources. This is important because it would mean, for example, that in order to prove, say, that Jesus was baptized by John, you don't also have to prove that the Gospels are reliable in saying Jesus was born in Bethlehem or that Jesus fed the 5,000. Each of these events can be weighed for its historical credibility on its own merits using these criteria of historicity.